Good afternoon, everybody, and you're very welcome to this talk about the Professional Masters of Education programme that we offer at the University of Limerick. I'm Orla McCormack. I'm a lecturer in the School of Education at UL, and I'm also the programme coordinator for the PME. So in the short talk, I want to do a number of things. I want to provide you with an overview of the structure of the programme so that if and when you come onto it, you can know what to expect. The PME is delivered by a really committed team, and I want to introduce you to a couple of members of that team. I also want to look at the entry requirements and the application process for the PME. And I want to look at what our current PME students are saying about the programme, and particularly what is it that's unique about the PME at UL. But firstly, before I progress with the presentation, I want to draw your attention to the title of this presentation, Teaching, the profession that creates all other professions. And I think many times students can go on and study or go into a career because of the influence of a teacher. And as we'll see in the next slide, I think teachers can have such an important impact on their students. So I'm going to progress on with the talk. I'm going to stop the video, but I'll come back to you at the end. As I mentioned on the last slide, and as you see in the figure in front of you, teachers have the power to have such a positive um, influence on their students. It could be through the love and enthusiasm of the subject that that rubs off on the student who then goes on to study it or have a career. It may impact that the student has a hobby for the rest of their life that they're really passionate about. It could be through the care of the student that you have an impact on their well-being. When I saw this image, I was reminded of a video I saw a couple of months ago about the, the soccer player Ian Wright. I'm not sure if you saw it, but Ian spoke about a teacher that had such a positive impact on him. Ian wouldn't have been very committed at school and would have been getting in trouble, but this teacher saw something in him and took an interest in him and was committed to him and really as a result of that helped him to succeed. And I think that's just such a beautiful thing to be able to do. And I would advise if you haven't seen that video to go and look at it on YouTube because he gets to meet the teacher again and to see that interaction between them and the love that he still has for that teacher is really powerful. The one other idea I want to talk about before we look at the specific PME programme in UL is about this idea of an effective teacher. And what does it mean to be an effective teacher? And I know from my case, I can look back at my educational experience and the great teachers that I had are often quite different from each other. So you can have teachers who are quite strict, teachers who are easygoing, teachers who are funny, teachers who are shy, and all of them in their own way can be effective. And there's many different types of personalities that can go on to be great teachers. Yes, some teachers might be born natural teachers, but others may be more introverted, but equally be as effective. What all these people probably have in common is that they make a connection in some way with the learner. And ultimately, relationships are at the centrality of good teaching. So I think it's important to start with the voice of the students themselves. And Laura Kelly is a PME2 student. So she has just completed the programme. And Laura was on the languages aspect of the PME. And Laura highlighted I suppose, the aspects of the programme that stood out for her, for her. She found the programme enjoyable. It is challenging. It is a busy two years but she highlighted the extremely helpful and supportive um, environment and also the range of different insights because you get contributions from numerous academics, teachers and so on. Um, you get to see things from many different perspectives. For Laura, the two aspects of the programme that stood out was firstly the pedagogy modules that I'll talk about in a few moments, but also the, the approach to school placement. And in UL, we have a different approach to school placement than other providers. We do a block placement. 
which means that you are in schools um, for eight weeks firstly and then 10 weeks full time. And what this means from Laura's perspective, if you see it, the last highlighted part is that you get an authentic experience of school life. So you really get into the school environment. You become a part of the culture of the school. You have very strong relationships with students because in a lot of cases you're teaching them all of their classes. You interact with cooperating um, teachers. In many cases, students have taken part in parent teacher meetings and staff meetings. They've been present for um, whole school evaluations and so on. What it also means, um, and again, I'll talk about this in a few moments, is that because it's a block placement, you can do this placement closer to home. So it's not that you, you don't have to be traveling to UL and the school within within the week. So it's a block period of time. And that's what makes you well stand out from other providers. In other institutions, students might have one or two days a week in a school and then they're in the university for the other days. Or it can be a half day in the school, half day at the university. But as from Laura's perspective, this block approach to placement really helps you to become um, a teacher. So we offer a number of, of subjects as part of the PME programme. So we have business, languages, mathematics, music, physical education, technology and science. And if you meet the subject declaration form requirements, which I'll talk about in a moment, you can study two of these subjects. So, for example, at the moment, we have students studying maths and physics. We have students studying music and maths. We have students studying PE and business. A lot of our students would be on, I suppose, one strand. So they would be pure business students or pure mathematics students. But if you have the modules within your undergraduate degree, um, there is the possibility of studying two subjects. There are certain requirements, though, that you need to meet before you, you're deemed eligible to be on the programme. So you have to have a level eight degree and you have to have received a minimum two two in this. But that level eight degree has to have been in the area, the subject area that you want to study. And there are specific requirements that you need to meet in terms of the subject declaration form. And I'm going to talk about that now. For each subject, then the, the teaching council have a set subject declaration form. And this outlines key areas that people have to have studied within their level eight degree. These have recently been changed. So if you've looked at these before and have been missing credits, it would be worth going back to look and, and see. So what you need to do with this is that you need to go on the Teaching Council website and look at the subject declaration forms for the subject area that you hope to apply for. You need to fill this in as best as you can in terms of your level eight degree. And then you can liaise um, ideally with the specific course directors because they are the people that know about this and have extensive experience within it. And they can advise you in terms of um, maybe mo modules that could be moved to different places or if there's potential gaps, what, um, what modules you could take prior to applying to fill in those um, gaps. So have a look at the Teaching Council website. And as I say, they have been changed recently and the change is making it more feasible for people to meet the requirements. So it's a really positive thing and um, is very welcomed. So applications for the programme are done online through the link on the slide. And in order to complete your application, we need your subject declaration form completed as well as is possible, and also a copy of your transcripts in English. 
So those are the two definite things that we we need. Other requirements are also listed there on the slide. For example, if English isn't your first language, you will need to show evidence of an English language qualification. In terms of the subject declaration form, you can submit this to either myself or ideally to the, the subject course directors, which I'll introduce you to in a few moments in advance of applying, because that means we can and they can give you advice as to filling out that subject declaration form as best as possible. So, as I said at the start of the presentation, the PME is um, delivered by a, a team and I want to introduce you to some of these team members. So each subject area has a course director and this really helps with the delivery of the programme because a lot of the time this is the person that's delivering the subject's pedagogy modules. And also, this is a direct contact that you have um, in terms of support and they're a really good support network um, for students. So let's meet some of them. So this is Jar Slattery and Jar leads the business aspect of the PME and his details are there if you wish to contact Jar. And this is Mary Masterson. Mary leads the language aspect of the PME and actually did her own PhD um, around German. And Mary's contact details are there also. Paddy Johnson leads the maths aspect of the PME. And again, details are there for your convenience. This is Jean Downey and Jean leads the music aspect of the PME and brings extensive experience with her, is nationally known and works with the State Exam Commission, for example, in terms of music. And there's Jean's details for you. So Antonio Calderon just recently took up the position as the lead for the PE aspect of the PME and his details are there. So the science PME is now going into its second year and it's led excellently by Ashleen Flaherty. And the technological education aspect of the PME is currently led by Joe Phelan. And then there's me, photo taken obviously in better younger times and my details if you need it. So what about the programme itself? And the programme itself is in three parts, really. So you have the education studies and professional studies. So these are the education modules that you will take, that you will look at various educational theories. You will look at learning. You will look at reflective practice. You will look at what does it mean to be a professional teacher? You will look in terms of the area that I teach myself, you will look at curriculum, curriculum change and school culture. As well as that, you have subject pedagogy modules. So I said earlier that there is an expectation that you have the subject knowledge before you come on to the programme from your undergraduate degree. But these pedagogy modules help you to teach the subject. So, for example, in science, we would look at inquiry based learning. Um, in languages, it's all about looking at teaching through the target language and so on. So these modules are, are really important. They are taken with people in your subject area, so they can be quite small groups that can be like 20 within the class. And they really help you to, to learn how to teach your subject effectively. The other thing is these pedagogy modules, you have six of them throughout the programme. And again, that's a really unique aspect of our programme at UL. The Teaching Council really only expects oftentimes one module, whereas by having these six pedagogy modules throughout the programme, it really helps you to hone your teaching skills within your specific subject area. Lastly, then, is school placement. And again, this is a core aspect of the programme and is 
as we saw in Laura's blog, is the bit that that students really enjoy and appreciate. And I'm going to talk more about school placement in a few moments. So this is an overview of the education and school placement modules that you would take as part of the program. So the first row is year one and then the second row is year two. So as well as that, in semester one, two, and four, you would have pedagogy modules. So again, this would be helping you to apply the educational theory as well as your subject knowledge within a classroom. So we have an amazing school placement team within UL. And again, this is one of the unique aspects of the PME at UL that we organize school placement for you okay and i'll talk a little bit about that on the next slide and marie young who you see in front of you is the academic ward director of school placement so Anne marie organizes the academic aspects of the placement looking at lesson planning reflective practice as well as overseeing the the grading process So there are two block placements and the first placement happens in year one, semester two, and that's an eight week placement. And the second placement then happens in year two, semester one, and that's 10 weeks. Placement one is pass fail. So you are deemed to be meeting requirements or not meeting requirements. And your tutors will come out and visit you and give you feedback and in, have a professional conversation with you about your, your practice. Likewise, in placement two, you have two tutors who will meet you in advance, talk to you about your planning, look at your lesson planning, talk to you about placement, will visit you while on placement and have a professional conversation with you and engage in reflective dialogue with you about your practice. And then you have a post school placement um, meeting with your tutors. Placement two is graded and it's graded from A1 to C3. So again, we organise the school placements for you and the school placement office work tirelessly placing students. They place hundreds of students every semester and even in the current climate with schools being closed, they're still engaging and liaising with schools to organise placements for next year. So what will happen is that you, if you're Offer the place on the programme, you will be linked up with the school placement office who will ask you to give your top geographical preferences in terms of placement schools. And Niamh and the school placement office begins working through that list to try and get you a school in one of those locations. And she is very successful in that regard. However, there is no guarantee that you will get a school in your geo preferred geographical location. The school placement office try as much as they can to do so, but they can't be guaranteed, particularly in certain geographical locations. There's a high demand and also some subjects, for example, may not be offered in a huge number of schools. So while often we're successful with this, you need to be aware of this before you accept a place on the programme. And this is a master's programme, OK, it's a professional master's of education. So there is a research element to it. And the difference with a master's, I suppose, than an undergraduate degree is that you're not just consuming knowledge, you're creating it. So there's a different expectation in terms of your engagement and interaction with the program. So we have two capstone projects and I'm, a, I'm going to talk briefly to one of these now. So you have the research element and this is a thesis and a research paper that you, you write 
And we also have a professional portfolio. But I'm going to talk to the research element briefly. So the research is coordinated by Jennifer Hennessy, who is in the School of Education. And what happens is that in semester one, you will be provided with a list of potential supervisors and potential research topics areas. And again, much like school placement, you will identify your preferences for these um, research projects. Jennifer then works to try and give as many people as possible their highest preference. So you will be connected up then with the research supervisor. And through a scaffolded process that runs across the four semesters, you will liaise with that supervisor, identify and clarify a research topic, read literature in relation to it, if necessary, get ethical approval, conduct research. Oftentimes that happens on school placement, that people might research teachers or some aspects of their practice while on placement. You will analyze that data. And ultimately in the last semester of the program, you write up an academic paper where you outline the key concepts, the methods that you use to collect the, the, the data and your key findings. So it, it can be challenging for people that maybe have never written anything like this before, but because of the structure of the, the programme and because of the way the research element is scaffolded throughout, there's set markers that you need to meet as well throughout it means that students are really supported. So the key markers, for example, that you might need to meet is that in semester two, you have to show that you have engaged in some way about ethics with your supervisor. You have to show that you have read some literature in relation to the, the area that you're, you're looking at. The research element of the PME is underpinned by three principles and ultimate goals. So we would hope that by the end of the programme, you have developed critical research literacy so that you can engage critically with research, that you can read academic papers and analyse them and critique them. Also that you develop research capacity so that you can actually conduct research, that you can consider the ethical dimensions of research, that you can design research instruments, conduct them, and then try to make sense of the actual data. And also that you can integrate theory, research and practice. So you can begin thinking of your data and linking it to existing um, research and literature, and that you begin to think about the implications of this for practice, for example. So what are the employability and job prospects at the end of this um, PME two-year programme? And the reality is that our students are highly employable. You see from the, the chart, um, recent graduates from the maths aspect of the PME, there was 100% employability um, within schools, and this was within Ireland. So our students are quite sought after, and that is because they're mature students. Um, they have extensive experience throughout the programme and also the extensive school placement experience means that they are effective teachers and that they're good at teaching their subject. And also the, the, ex, the level of pedagogy and pedagogical knowledge that they gain from the programme supports this also. So that's the end of the presentation. I hope you find it helpful. Thank you for joining the talk today and I'm happy to take any particular questions that people have. Um, my details are on the slide again 
and feel free to email me um, if you have any additional questions. OK, thank you. And hopefully we'll be seeing you on the PME programme at UL soon. Take care.